Hi all. So welcome to the second lecture on uh, the electromagnetic waves. So in this small video, I'll be discussing about the wave in a stressed string. So in the last class, uh, we have seen that um, uh, the, uh, any wave function has to satisfy the differential equation. So the wave in one dimension. has to satisfy the differential equation dot square f by dot z square equals one by v square dot square f by dot t square. Okay, now as a physical example, so consider a stretched string, which is fixed at one end and free at other end. And we are going to oscillate the free end. Okay, so if you uh, started oscillating the free end, so obviously what would happen is the, the wave generates uh, on this string and it will propagate through this string. Okay, so consider, uh, let us uh, so suppose uh, we have completed the half of the oscillation of the string of the free end, then we must have produced the half of the wave. Okay, so this is the, the picture of the string at one particular instant. And uh, when time goes on, this uh, uh, pulse will move forward. Okay, and if you're continuously oscillating, then you will be getting a continuous uh, wave in the stretched string. Now, consider a small portion, very small portion within this uh, string, and uh, we can uh, enlarge it. So if you enlarge that, okay. Okay, now, uh, so this uh, better we can uh, plot as a graph. Now the shape of this uh, string is where as we are representing by the function f because that represent the f represent the shape of the wave or is a wave function and this is a direction of propagation we are represented by symbol z okay for the time being this location the starting point of uh, uh, this location i am denoting by symbol z and this end point of uh, this small portion of the string i am denoting as z plus delta z okay now uh, this small portion of the string uh, must be experiencing force from the both sides so if you look at uh, the left side of the z the left side of the point z then uh, the string on the left side uh, uh, must be uh, exerting the force along this direction Okay, and uh, the, the right side portion of Z plus Delta Z must be exerting the force along this direction. Okay, now this force uh, uh, we can uh, denote it as tension of the string. So the tension must be same throughout. If it is a, a non-stretchable string, the tension must be same on both sides. So the, the tension we can denote by symbol T. And uh, the angle which makes with the horizontal, we can denote by symbol theta and theta dash. Okay, so this way, this string must be moving in the upward and downward direction. That would be depending upon uh, the transverse force, the net transverse force. So if you uh, take the component of the tension for the both uh, sides, there will be a transverse component for this. So that will be in the upward direction. And here the transverse component would be in the downward direction. So transverse component here, we can write as T 
sin theta prime and here it would be t sin theta and hence the net transverse force on this small portion of the string we can write as t sin theta prime minus t sin theta okay so this is the net transverse force now if uh, distortion is small that is if theta and theta prime are small then if theta and theta prime are small, then sine theta prime sine theta can be approximated as tan theta. So we can write as T tan theta prime minus T tan theta. Okay. Now uh, the tan theta, the tangent of a function can be written as the derivative of the function. Okay. So uh, T sine theta is same as T tan theta. So this tan theta, uh, actually equal to a dou f by dou z and tan theta prime would be equal to dou f by dou z at location z plus delta z so this can be as t times dou f by dou z at location z plus delta z minus dou f by dou z at location z okay So what we have got is net transverse force equal T times dou F by dou Z at location Z plus delta Z minus dou F by dou Z at location Z. Now what is the definition for the second derivative of uh, the function f with respect to z so dou square f by dou z square is basically limit delta z into zero dou f by dou z at z plus delta z minus dou f by dou z at z divided by delta z so therefore this term we can write in terms of the second derivative so for small delta z, I can write it is simply equal to t times dou square f by dou z square times delta z. Okay, now uh, this way, the this, this string is a classical uh, string and obviously it should obey the Newton second law. So Newton's second law of motion says that, says that uh, uh, the net force would be equal to the mass into acceleration or rate of change of momentum. If mass is constant, it is simply equal to mass into acceleration. So therefore the net transverse force would be equal to the mass into the acceleration. Now, uh, in order to represent mass, uh, we are going to introduce uh, the mass per unit length for the string. So mu is a mass per unit length. So the mass of delta z length would be mu into delta z. And what would be the acceleration? The acceleration would be the second derivative of f with respect to time. So therefore this become the mass mu into delta z dou square f by dou t square. Now we can equate uh, these two things. So the left side is T dou square F by dou Z square delta Z equal mu times delta Z dou square F by dou T square. So delta Z would cancel. And what we'll get is dou square F by dou Z square equal mu upon T dou square F by dot t square okay now we got uh, the wave equation satisfied by uh, the wave propagating in a stretched string so this is an example for one dimensional wave 
and we have found that uh, this mu by t comes as the location of 1 by v square okay the original wave equation is dot square by dot z square equal to 1 by v square dot square by dot t square so at the location of 1 by v square we are getting mu by t so therefore the speed of the wave simply equal to square root of t by mu so the speed of the wave in a stretched string is equal to the square root of tension by the mass per unit length so if mass increases if the mass of the the string increases or mass per unit length of the string increases then speed decreases if tension increases the speed increases okay so that's all about um, uh, the wave in a stretched string so we have just uh, shown the example of uh, uh, the, the power of the wave equation in one physical system so in the next class uh, we'll be discussing we'll be discussing about uh, the harmonic wave or sinusoidal wave in detail and uh, we'll introduce a certain terminology like uh, the angular frequency the wave length uh, the wave number etc in the next class okay see you then bye